Good morning, my tubers, my TikTokers, and my Twitters, and my Tubies. Today is Thursday, March 9th. It's going to be a great day today. My bus is going to come on time, like it's been doing, and life is sweet. And today we're going to be focusing on Luke chapter 9, verse 23 and 24, where it says, Jesus continued to say to all of them, any of you who want to be my follower must stop thinking about yourself and what you want. You must be willing to carry the cross that is given to you every day for following me. Any of you who try to save the life you have will lose it. But you who give up your life for me will save it. So that's a beautiful scripture and it's showing us exactly what it takes to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. To be a disciple, it means to be a learner. It means following after Jesus and patterning our life after his. Jesus tells us that the starting point of following him is to deny ourselves. Denying ourselves mean we choose to put Jesus desires above our own. This means that we must come to recognize that we do not have all the answers or know the right way to go through life without him. Being a disciple is not something we do once or twice. It is a lifestyle that must be lived out each and every day. We will spend our entire lives becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. That's a lifelong process because we have good days and then we'll have challenging days. When we deny ourselves, we choose to humbly follow Jesus Christ. And as we become more like Jesus, we will also need to take up our cross. We will also we will also suffer for doing good and for denying things that seem enticing in the moment, but ultimately it keeps us from God and Christ. But when we bear our suffering, we represent Christ to those around us. Now, the paradox of following Jesus is that when we give up our life for his sake, we receive eternal life in return. When we hold on to our life and keep it for, from Jesus Christ, we don't get to experience the abundant life that he promises us. Take some time today to consider more ways you can live a life that is pleasing to both Jehovah and his son, Jesus Christ. Take inventory on the ways you are denying yourself and how you're living for Jesus Christ or living selflessly for your own pleasure and your own gain. Commit to following Jesus no matter how hard the path gets and pray for strength and endurance as you follow him. Now, it's not natural for us to disregard our own interests and our own desires. That's why we have to ask Jehovah in prayer to work in our lives so that we can learn to be more of a sacrificial person. We need him to strengthen us in times of trouble and distress and to show us how to carry our cross like Jesus Christ carried his. So it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be a walk in the park. But with Jehovah God and Jesus Christ helping us, we can definitely do this. And the beauty is there are such great rewards waiting for you. And now we are going to move along to your Bible trivia. How well do you really know your Bible? Let me go over the answers from yesterday. And the first question was, when the Israelites left Egypt, whose bones did Moses take with him? The answer is Joseph. <clears throat> it was C, Joseph. The next question, on Mount Sinai, who inscribed the stone tablets? It was God. Next, oh, that was B, sorry. B, God. The next question was, where was Moses when he beheld the burning bush? The answer was B, 
Horeb. Horeb. H-O-R-E-B. Next, what was the first plague that could not be replicated by Egyptian magicians? And that was gnats. A. Gnats. The last question yesterday was, which of the following was not a plague that fell upon the Egyptians? That answer is C. Serpents invaded people's homes. They couldn't replicate that, definitely. Now we're going to move on to your next questions. The first one is to prevent the death of the firstborn child. Where were the Israelites supposed to put lamb's blood? Was it A, their foreheads, B, their doors, or C, their hands? Next, while Moses was on Mount Sinai, the Israelites made an idol in the likeness of a what? Was it A, a calf? B, a bear, or C, a serpent. Next, how old was Moses when he told the Pharaoh of Egypt to let the Israelites go? Was he A, 21? Was he B, 45? Or was he C, 80 years old? What did Moses do to the idol that the Israelites made while he was on Mount Sinai. Did he A, made them drink it? B, made them destroy it? Or C, ask God to strike it with lightning? And last question, which did Moses throw into the water at Mehra to make it less bitter? Was it A, sand? B, a piece of wood, or C, was it leaves? So let's see how you do, and let's see how well do you know your Bible. As you know, I will be uh, giving you the answers tomorrow, <clears throat> which I'm looking forward to. And in closing, I want you to focus on what you do have instead of what you don't have. That's a wonderful habit. To develop because positive thinking well you have the choice between negative thinking and positive thinking that's always a habit you get to choose what you think about now I know there's a lot of problems in this world but you don't have to try to solve the ones you're not passionate about I'm very passionate about well women not being pressed into getting into abusive relationships and I'm also passionate about exposing the uh, organization for who they really are. You know, I used to be a Jehovah Witness and, you know, like Jesus Christ said that, you know, false teachers and false prophets are supposed to be exposed. You know, at the same time, I'm very grateful for everything that I have. And every night before I go to bed, like eight o'clock, I have an alarm set. And that's when I put in my journal everything that went well for me for that day. And then I think about, what can I do better tomorrow? And I do that religiously, 8 o'clock every night. And even though, like I said, things may be tough, if you don't go through anything, you'll never really know how tough you really are. <laughs> it's imperative that you're tested for endurance because the blessings that Jesus has in store for you will blow your mind. But you have to be prepared for your frenemies, you know? If we trust in Jesus Christ and keep his commandments and walk in love, then no matter what, it's gonna hurt sometimes, but in the end, you'll reign supreme and you will win, my darlings. So you keep a stiff upper lip and always try to stay positive. I know there's a lot going on in the world today, but don't forget to stay prayed up and everything will fall into place. This is Sheila True Love, always loving you. Jehovah loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. And I love you so much too. Have a great day.